Is possible one question about the meditation? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, okay. Because um, when in this special point, Shakti uh, Kalam and Shiva Kalam, uh, when you tell Shakti Kalam, we need to do some practice in this moment or only enjoy the state? Enjoy the expansion that as much as you can. Okay. So what happens is there's two parts that operates within ourselves. One is our imagination, which obviously is one of the biggest asset we have. We can imagine as much as we can. Second is when we do any kind of activity, a magnetism that follows us, what we call as biomagnetism. A magnetism is the one that operates in everything that happens around us and equally governs the consciousness. When it generates from a living being, Maharishi coined the word called biomagnetism. So our magnetism, when we expand, there's two ways you can attain the granularity or the grand air of this universe is one by expanding as much as you can, reaching infinity or shrinking yourself down to nothingness or zero. There's two ways you can do. It's easier for us to expand a placebo, which tells us the grandeur of this universe that we have experienced so far is much bigger than the tiny I. So we merge ourselves into this bigger I, enjoy the great being of this world and this universe, eventually merging ourselves into a static state from where all this begin and that's the progressive state of moving into an infinite form is what this uh, Turiyatitam teaches. That's, there's more inner meaning to it, but practicality-wise, the practical way we do it is by expanding ourselves as much as possible and expanding our biomagnetic force along with it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Anytime. Anyone has any questions, concerns? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> because so many questions. Uh, yeah, it's obviously, <laughs> when you ask questions, that's when your mind is expanding, which means you are diving into Shakti Gala, which is the whole idea of this meditation is to understand how the existence even came into being and then eventually merge ourselves into it. So absolutely have questions, okay. no doubt. Ask. And then uh, if, if we can tell final state of meditation, the final state of meditation is only silence and emptiness. Uh, it's to, to try to... Uh, it okay. Is it's, a state of emptiness? It's, it's a question everybody asks, and it's a question where there is no answer. Nobody can answer you. It's the experience of oneness that you get, which you cannot explain in word, but has answers to everything. When you attain that state, you will know for sure that you have attained that particular you want to call it any way you want to call it, Samadhi state or Adi state, Nirvana, however you want to call it or name it. It's a state where you have answers to all your questions. It's a state where no question arises and you will have nothing. If As long as you have a question, it's a measure of we have not attained that point. So, so it's just a simple measure. So by putting too much pressure into it, we are actually going against it. We should let it happen. That's the reason why I, most of the time when we do meditation, I told you not to force meditation, not to concentrate. Dhyana is different from Samadhi. Dharana is different from Samadhi. There's different ways they call it. Don't force meditation. Let it happen to you. Just enjoy the process. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Vijayalakshmi, I'm not sure if I is joining. Do you want to start with the questions that's on the list? Uh, yeah, I will call one more time. 
Okay, sure. So in the meantime, yeah, uh, Sampath, I saw you unmuting yourself. Do you have any questions? Oh, good morning, Volga um, Yeah, so yeah, just a quick clarification. Um, I had my uh, hernia surgery last week, so I'm not doing mm -hmm. my physical exercise. But I think last week we discussed about uh, by increasing the biomagnetism, um, that recovery will be faster. So I'm just uh, trying yes. to focus my yes. mind. Oh, yes. yes. So that's better. This is a time when whatever you have learned can be applied. Um, last week, I also said, do Kaya Kalpa. When you do Kaya Kalpa, direct the energy to the place where it has pain in it. So you know for sure the healing process is taking quickly. This is the time when you test what you have learned. Again, I would never say don't ignore the doctors, okay? You go through your tests, you go through what you have to go through every single time. Doctors are divine incarnation. Every single doctor I see or look at, they are all divine incarnation. God cannot come and save us. Doctors are there for us. So follow doctor's advice. And also, any practice that you have done, meditation, spreading the energy, direct it to that place. Direct it to as much as possible so you can enhance the healing process better. Do not do physical exercise unless until it is cleared out and the doctor says you can do it. Please go by the advice because there are certain people who are like how you get advice going into meditation. You go to a guru and get the advice. Doc, guru is superior to us because we have not reached it physically and psychologically. Doctors are there who have learned, practiced, follow their advice, use the techniques that you have learned to speed up your recovery. I'm, I hope you have a yes, thank you. faster recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I can do Kaya Kalpa, right? Um, so Definitely Kaya Kalpa. Do not exert too much pressure yes, because yes. you just, any any time you do a surgery, that's the first thing that we do is when you have come through a surgery, we have a couple of doctors here, Dr. Ananda, Dr. Satantra Devi, who have been practicing for many years. They can explain better. Anytime you come out of a surgery, it's always better not to exert too much pressure but directing the energy, your magnetic shield and your life force could increase or speed up the healing process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vijayalakshmi Amma, any? Uh, last week, uh, may know what time Maya joined. I'm unable to reach Aya it. joined almost towards the end, tail end of it. He called me. Uh, let me look at my uh, call log. He joined around 9.39. So it's almost towards the end. So around 9.45 is he joined. He called me around 9.39. Mm -hmm. So he said he was in Waterloo, so he couldn't join. He was traveling, so... Um, we can start our questions from the list. Uh, unless Parasha, you have a question, please. Yes, Go ahead. Short question that uh, continuation of uh, Julia's uh, question. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, if you don't seek anything, uh, that means you are self realized. My question was that is that possible that you do not have any questions, you are not seeking anything, but you are still not self realized? Very, very very interesting good questions um before i answer i have people here on the meeting um they can anybody who wants to answer their questions um because i've been talking about this for many many years with you Paranji. i would want to have other people's perspective as well anyone who wants to answer that question if i don't have any questions if i don't seek anything does that mean i'm realized Go ahead, Anand, Dr. Ananda. Go ahead. Thank you, Tarunaya. I mean, um, not having any questions, not seeking anything could be due to two things. Number one, a person doesn't know anything. Number two, a person knows everything. 
So if a person is quite obviously following the Magreshi's practice and got a long duration of practice for years and years and attained a very nice deep samadhi multiple times for again many months and many years as uh, Tarunaya said the, all the questions will be answered and there won't be any question at all. That phase that there is no question at all it is more of a spiritualistic sentence which means they know what is the meaning of life, they know how the life starts, they know how what is the purpose of life. So those kind of spiritualistic philosophical questions will be self-revealed and that's why they don't have any questions. Still for example if there is a materialistic question like for example what is the chemical formula for water H2O if they do know they may still ask it. If they are traveling somewhere in India and if they don't know how to catch an auto or a cab, they may still ask. So materialistic, life-related, common questions will be still there. But spiritualistic, high-level questions will be all self-answered. But having said that, there is an other end of the spectrum where a person out of ignorance, quite new to the practice, uh, may not know what to ask because to ask question itself we need some knowledge say for example Julia has asked about this Shakti Kalam and Shiva Kalam that means she understood little bit closer to Shakti Kalam and Shiva Kalam with some doubts in it but if somebody don't know this whole process of meditation and stages etc out of ignorance and out of a bit of a kind of a humility and um, lack of knowledge they may not be asking any questions that is extremely the other end of the spectrum thank you Dr. Does it mean that uh, if you have a book knowledge uh, if you have a book knowledge which is my, my uh, uh, narrative was that when your book knowledge on a higher level of spirituality, uh, but you still do not self-realize. Is that what you're telling me that? And uh, maybe I misunderstood what you said. Yes. Uh, not the ignorance of a material, material life, but you know everything what is said in the scriptures, you understand everything, but you are not self-realizing. You, you know that you are not, you, know, you don't know who you are. Okay. Uh, in my view, self-realization means somebody able to feel very personally what is that samadhi and what is given in the books. That is self-realization. Learning in a book or uh, even Tarun mentioned that that particular stage samadhi nobody can explain. That's the exact sentence Tarunaya said. So there are few things which unfortunately a book or uh, article or something written in a, in a scripture may not explain and um, so self-realization means following the books and following Magarishi's advice and uh, they used to say that the last step we need to take it with hours and hours of odious practice and uh, absolute faith the last step you will be taking it which will be quite relieving that is the step of self-realization and once that happens you will connect the dots and you will be interpreting quite different meaning of various scriptures and what they actually mean. Sometimes it will be quite gobsmacking to know that this is what I read in this scripture, this is what my understanding is but after getting that self-realization, that's why the term is quite self-explanatory, it is a self-realization Magrishi can't give you the realization, he can give you only the path. None of the group practice will give you the realization. It is the self-realization which gives you the other side of the scriptures and uh, that feeling is quite inexplainable and uh, many people have failed to explain that. And um, But these practices will really take you there. But the final step, if a person take that depth of dive, they will get it and uh, th that's a wonderful feeling and uh, and it's uh, very difficult to say if a person is self-realized or not unless if that particular person is able to reveal it because it's a very very first person experience thank you Dr. Ramadan. 
Thank you. Warig uh, Olamden, anybody else wants to take that question with a different perspective as well? Or compare what Dr. Ananda said? I think uh, with those questions, once IIC, we can discuss. Uh, if uh, any general questions, we can discuss, right? Since uh, the, some of the questions Aya gave, so we wanted to hear from him. Okay. About the Manisha's uh, questions, we have Aya's questions yeah, also. That's, that's that's what I was trying last week, but uh, before Aya joined, uh, we just went in because we always talk about good things about meditation. What happens if we are something bad happens to us? How do we take it? So, um, so it's not responding. So, um, I can take this deeper into these questions have more collaborative talks if we need to um, before I uh, join. Yeah, it's up to uh, Tim. Yeah, we can okay. do that. So, so let's go deeper. How? What is deeper is what the question is. How deep can you go to something that we um, realize, okay? So I'm going to throw in a question. Consciousness. Okay, each one of us define not what Margarishi has said, how you have felt consciousness within yourself. And then we'll take one step deeper, one step, one step into higher, higher, higher level till we find out where we cannot define what consciousness is or we have realized what consciousness is. Okay, so. I'm opening up with the question, what is consciousness? Anyone? It's an open discussion. You can unmute yourself. Don't have to raise your hand. <clears throat> unmute, unmute yourself. What do you understand consciousness from your stand? Pure awareness. I'm not asking for another word. Define in a words, words, sentences. So consciousness can't be awareness. Awareness is different from consciousness. You can use awareness, but define in sentence what you understand consciousness. Um, I can then. Yeah, go ahead. Just <laughs> okay, because I understand, it, but only in in the intellect. It's not realization, no. I, I see in consciousness is Shiva itself is all pervading. Consciousness is all pervading uh, and is not only in is in us, but is in in the self. The self, okay, the self are, are we are, but the, is consciousness is Shiva for me. Okay, but. Uh, it's not realization, no? Okay. So again, by asking this question, I'm not forcing you to think that's only highly spiritually evolved people can tell consciousness. You can be as low as definition. What do you think is aware of it? So again, Parachaji said aware. What I want is like a sentence what you said. Awareness is part of consciousness, yes. But describe how you feel consciousness. So you said you feel consciousness as you are himself, self helping you to self-realize. Fine. Okay. Anyone else has a definition? So remember, if you have no questions, means you are self-realized. Again, okay, uh, Dr. Ananda, don't have to raise your hands. Just unmute. It's an open conversation. Unmute yourself and then you can you can talk. So thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, in these discussions, I will try my best to stay calm so that uh, everybody gets some opportunity. Uh, that's why I want to do it as a last, um, because I want others also to contribute. Uh, my view on mm -hmm. consciousness is, is quite straightforward. In simple terms, in scientific terms, in materialistic terms, for a layman, consciousness means being awake, unable to use the five senses to observe what is happening outside. 
say for example now i'm conscious i'm sitting in a chair i'm hearing what's happening in this zoom discussion i'm using my mouth to speak i can see in my eyes what's happening around my room that is consciousness for spirituality or in spirituality aspect the correct term which we need to define and understand is pure consciousness consciousness is muddled or speckled or mixed with the five senses seeing hearing tasting touching etc if we remove this five sensory inputs what is left out is the pure consciousness so in meditation say for example you are going up through every chakra turiyadidam and then shakti kalam and then when you are going into that shiva kalam then when you spend enough time especially it works well if you are doing on our own time so that we don't have any time constraints like a zoom session where we are more led by somebody who is leading the meditation you may be able to spend many minutes or even an hour in that nice samadhi state where there is no input from your five senses remember your inputs are only through five senses apart from five senses there is no way you can feel the world so if you are able to get above these five senses you are still conscious but fortunately there is no sensory input that is pure consciousness once you reach that pure consciousness that in the scriptures are explained as samadhi then you will have a kind of a very very calm feeling which is defined as the shiva kalam which is what happened before the big bang etc and uh, the time stops and you won't be feeling anything and but our sensory systems and including our own brain won't allow us to stay there for longer time as you practice you may be able to increase it by seconds or by minutes etc they used to say that if you are able to keep that uh, absolute pure consciousness for 20 seconds that's more than enough for you to understand what is world and uh, then the sensations will come up and your thoughts will come up and it will slowly bring you outside the shiva kalam that's where the activity starts any activity a thought or anything starts then your pure consciousness becomes just simple consciousness once the activity starts it is known as shakti kalam shakti is the one which represents activities while shiva kalam is the one which represents the pure consciousness or absolute uh, inactivity or brahmam we'll say and then once the activity starts then people will come out quickly or somebody will come out slowly it depends upon that individual preference so consciousness is the one which runs anything in the world without consciousness you can't feel anything you can't think anything you can't see anything without consciousness a person is a dead person even in the sleeping your consciousness is working that's the main reason for your dream and uh, during the deep sleep we all think that our consciousness is not working it is working but our biomagnetism is spent so much in repairing the brain and making sure everything is nicely tidied up etc that's why we feel as if the activities in the brain are so low and we feel the deep sleep is uh, like without any dreams etc but uh, the difference between that deep sleep and the meditative pure consciousness state is during the meditative pure consciousness state you can enjoy it or uh, you can feel it it's it's a bliss state and uh, while in a sleep deconscious state you can't feel anything that's the main difference i hope it's helpful or kavala mudan thank you dr anand kavala mudan i see iphone aya you know who is in iphone i iphone name name in iphone yeah is that uh, dr ayya presently joined i am not sure whether it is mbr sir can you please unmute and talk uh, vargal on this is praveen here hi praveen oh okay praveen vargal on vargal yeah sure um thank you dr ananda let's switch um blanka you raised your hand yeah go ahead unmute yourself and 
Yes, good morning. Um, to me, consciousness is to experience or to realize what we are here in, in the environment on in Earth, what surrounds us, and how the spirit works with us, within us. Uh, the, the word consciousness in Spanish is conciencia, which means with science. So um, put some science into religion and mysticism, and then we combine that experience of, of the physicality plus the spirituality. And when you realize that you are a combination of all those sheaths and all those uh, different levels of, of density or subtleness, uh, then, then that's it. that is the consciousness that you have of yourself. You know yourself and with the material knowledge and the spiritual knowledge together. And then you, when you experience it and you really know through meditation, what you're feeling and the energy that is coming down, that's what's consciousness for me. I would agree with Blanca. Yeah. Then go Excellent. ahead, Vijay Lakshmi, go ahead and tell your definition of consciousness. How do you feel and experience it? Yes, yeah, same as uh, Blanca said. Yeah, I would definitely agree with the. Uh, so yeah, cognizing things around us, which means being aware of things that's happening. Not only that, it's a combination of physical world, physical uh, the outer consciousness as well as inner. It's everything merging at one point, you know, the outer consciousness is all. It's a, as Magarishi told, it's an order of function. So we cannot define this is the consciousness with the outside uh, alone or with the inside. Everything should be merged to that level. It's uh, we can call it as total consciousness. Uh, it's all uh, in a different uh, perspective. We can say as with Magarishi's uh, point, a order of function. Uh, but the ultimate consciousness will be as black as it's all merged with the uh, physical, uh, psychic, uh, chemical, everything together. And there we will feel the total consciousness. Yeah, that's my point. Yes, it's it's like God inside of us, not outside only, but inside. Everything connected. And the experience of it, that's the consciousness. Okay, thank you. Um, I had various different definitions. Um, so now one step further. If God slash consciousness is within you, why do you experience someone else? For instance, why is there Blanka? Why is there Tarun? Why is there uh, Vijayalakshmi Amma? Why is there Dr. Ananda? If consciousness is within us, there's only one, why is there a difference that we experience? So I'm, I'm going deeper into understanding the conversation, how we stop getting questions by going deeper. It's a, it's a form of introspection that Magrishi talks about thought analysis in the thought analysis. So next is, if consciousness exists, I am God, and I've realized I am God, why does another person right opposite to me exist? Anyone wants to comment? Shankar, go ahead. Um, what I realize as consciousness, the state that from the initial primordial state of the divine state, which manifested into or transformed into so many existence, and the last existence would be a man, we call it as. And the man himself realizes the primordial state or the divine state. And during the time that he will merge one with the primordial state. And he will get the state where he will not even you know, realize 
whether he is in the state of primordial state, the divine state, or as a manifested human state. If you arrive to that state, you will not feel any difference, either you are a divine state or an existence or manifested state. So this is the state that, you know, we are all trying to be. <clears throat> and the state from the primordial to the manifested state of the human being, the consciousness expands and also the consciousness merges. The both, you know, happens in a harmony or synchronized way, the state, in that state, we will not feel anything. You know, that's, that's a consciousness and that's a state that you will not feel any difference between all the manifested existence in this world. Thank you. Have you experienced that state, even if it's for one second? Um, many times during our deep meditations. Thank you. So we have an example of a person who does see the difference between you and me, but eventually has merged it. So we will come back to you on that. Um, I'm opening up for someone else to comment on this. If consciousness is one, why do we see differences in different people? Yeah, Vijay Lakshmi, go. No, no, I'm not trying to answer. Uh, so it is unmuted. Okay. So anytime I see anybody unmute or anytime I see a hands rise, I will call their name. So right now I see Bharatshaji unmuted. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I My understanding is that uh, yeah, I may not have the direct answer what you're talking about what i understand is that that uh, nothing exists it's an illusion it's a mystery that we see it and uh, uh, pure consciousness cannot be defined and when you define something it is a concept it's not it's not consciousness that's what i want to say Thank you. Amazing. That's a very good thing. So we are going beyond physical experience into spiritual thought process. So again, if you paid close attention to what Dr. Anand had to say, there's one where we physically feel something and then we go in spirituality, we go beyond physical experience and understanding that gives you a spiritual existence leading you into consciousness. So we're getting there. So Julia, yeah, go ahead. Yes, um, I, we see a Patanjali Yoga Sutra, always Patanjali help me to understand something. Um, in the Sutra of Patanjali tell when one person is moving towards Samadhi, um, reach the state of Stita Paranya, it is the state of pure consciousness. Uh, is before Samadhi, but uh, if uh, all the British are um, su uh, surprised, are uh, restraining, Chita is restraining uh, means other, uh, our movements of the mind are uh, calm, uh, like the oceans, that the, the waves don't allow to, to see the self. But when the wave is calm, we can see uh, the self. And then that is pure consciousness. But why is uh, we know this, but we, we act and we are different and we act in different form? It's because uh, our mind, our chitta, is not, uh, uh, is full of movement. And then uh, we can see the pure conscience. We can uh, not see, we can realize the pure conscience. And then I think it's like this. And then uh, for that, uh, this meditation practice uh, and all this help us to, to bring our mind the real state of 
consciousness, consci consciousness, uh, pure consciousness. I think so. It's something like this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, um, thank you for bringing in Padanjali's definition. But what we are trying to do here is our personal experience and expanding it into understanding and realizing. So please talk in your personal experience um, by giving examples, um, not taking examples and then trying to explain. We're not trying to define consciousness. We are trying to define consciousness as how we see it. Oh, oh understood, understood. Okay. Okay. Let's start defining consciousness. What is according to you is consciousness and have you experienced it? So now the next question came in was, if I am pure consciousness, why do I see different people? You touched on the point where something called an entity you introduced saying mind comes into picture that my mind thinks that the other person has a different mind creating a difference in the opinion, creating a difference of understanding between two person. Maybe that is the reason why I see the other person different from me. Dr. Ananda, go ahead. Thank you. Um, how we can um, resolve this question of how we are able to appreciate others in our consciousness is, the pure consciousness is a solidarity state. There is nothing like Tarun's pure consciousness, my pure consciousness, Bharat Shah's pure consciousness or something like that. Pure consciousness is just one pure consciousness whether you are in earth or any planet or any religion or anywhere in the timeline or the history. But what we need to understand how we can experience it that we have discussed in the first question where if you are able to meditate, if you are able to soak into that uh, Shiva Kalam, you will feel that pure consciousness for some, it's only a few seconds, but it can end up even in few minutes, etc. You will feel that difference of pure consciousness and uh, anything just sh stopping short of it because that pure consciousness is, is entirely a different feeling. And once you feel it, you will be able to travel to that state more quickly. That's why people who are more experienced, they can easily achieve that pure consciousness or samadhi even in the normal Zoom relate to Zoom or any common meditative sessions. Like how, for example, I enjoy my pure consciousness during that deep meditation or samadhi, Tarun, Vijayalakshmi Amma, anybody can enjoy the same pure consciousness is there everywhere. Why it is the same pure consciousness? Because the pure consciousness has no qualities. Since there is no qualities, the pure consciousness of Tarunaya and Vijayalakshmi Amma or Bharatshaya has no difference with my pure consciousness. The only thing is when an individual, could be any one of us, they come down from that pure consciousness and use the sensory systems or the mind to think something, then only people will differ. Somebody will think I belong to America, I will think I belong to England, those who are from India will, so it's all individual. So pure consciousness is absolute solidarity, it is same for anyone. That's why if somebody is giving a good talk, and uh, it's our ritual in the Magrishi sessions that we usually say, let us focus from the Turiya Titam and bless the person who spoke. Because Turiya Titam is the last humane step. After Turiya Titam, we are going to like non-humane steps. And the last step is the Shivakalam. So the minimum possible from the humanity point of view is reaching the Turiya Didam state or that is the highest state minimum possible. While the maximum possible we are defining by the way of uh, terminology like uh, Shiva Kalam. So for Tarun Naya's question on how we are able to appreciate different people, the different people are all same whether it's Magrishi or Jesus or Allah or Shivam or uh, Shakti or any Buddha or any God, they're all same in pure consciousness. Only when the pure consciousness, I will say, got adulterated or mixed or 
or uh, we can use the word even impurity impured by any other mind or sensory systems the individual get uh, portrayed and uh, um, i'm saying impurity because uh, it's not bad impurity it just means the pure consciousness is getting contaminated that's what i mean if we are able to appreciate the presence of pure consciousness in anyone from your perspective not necessarily that person needs to know about the pure consciousness or not for example i am a practicing doctor in uk i can vouch if i have a clinic of 30 patients especially the english caucasian patients none of them know what is pure consciousness at all and those who have studied in college or something like that they may be knowing about consciousness not the pure consciousness but if we take every step in our life that this particular person walking in front of me has the same pure consciousness and appreciate it we will render so much of love towards others and we can appreciate this pure consciousness in thin hair in plant in animals in the universe in the whole process of everything we can appreciate the pure consciousness vargavanam தமிழ் கண்டவர் வெண்டிலர் வெண்டவர் கண்டிலர் ஹவு மெனி ஆஃப் யூ கேன் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் ஐ டோன்ட் நோ தி கான்ஷியஸ்னஸ் இஸ் அன் இன்டிஃபைனபிள் திங் அஸ் யூன் அஸ் யூ டிஃபைன் இட் யூ ஆர் ராங் ஈவன் ஐ வுட் ஹேவ் ஃபேஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் தி சேம் பட் வி ஹேவ் டு கிவ் சம் அண்ட் யூ நோ கண்டவர் வெண்டிலர் மீன்ஸ் தோஸ் ஹூ ஹேவ் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ்ட் இட் நெவர் டாக் அபௌட் இட் தோஸ் ஹூ டாக் அபௌட் இட் ஹேஸ் நெவர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ்ட் இட் சோ தட் இஸ் ஆல் தி so i don't know i have seen we can go on explaining about conscious as i have a full business but then i can only say that and uh, it is the one thing that is i don't know really at it that's how i feel all the all the but the superficial aspects like waking consciousness dreaming consciousness sleeping consciousness and then unconscious truth for for a long time for hours together that the basic uh, stratum can no can only be experienced and cannot be defined at all thank you abna war go to hear from you listening we hear from you my understanding of consciousness no let's go deeper into it further so why do we find the difference between one person the other so everybody here kind of says that they are all same something like mind or some kind of an interference that comes in and then makes the definition of one per- personal person just the other my next question would be this that margaret she said as again um dr devi said moment you talk about consciousness 
you conceptualize, um, we say that God is either infinity or zero. As soon as you define a number between infinity and zero, it becomes we experienced it. So now my experience is different from your experience. My understanding of what each one of you are talking is different from the others. How do we overcome by sometimes agreeing by disagreeing? Sometimes disagreeing. How do we overcome by some You're pretty much doing one thought analysis introspection right now, which we yeah thought in introspection one. 